Hi, this is Representative Al Baldassau, and I'm back again with Who's Looking Out for You with my co host, Speaker Sherm Packard. Sherm, welcome once again. Welcome, Al. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's an honor always to be served with you at the House. And, uh, you know, of course, we know I made my decision after 16 years, I'm not running again. And I was fortunate to kind of talk to somebody and push them a little bit. and. Uh, to get him to step up and run there, who I think would be a awesome, awesome state representative, who has committed herself and you know worked at the town, was on the planning board for many years, been involved in a lot of town um, things that have been going on, the cleanup and other stuff. Uh, Laura Elzeem, welcome, Laura. Thank you, thank it, you, Al. It's an honor, but you know I don't like. I, I'm going to ask you the same question, like I did Caroline. Okay, being you're young like Caroline there, I know what in the hell would you want to get into this game for? Uh, well, like you said, you encouraged me, and you do mm. make it look easy. But um, mm. so really, I've raised my family here in Londonderry. I love New Hampshire, and um, I really would like to keep New Hampshire as awesome it is, as it is for as long as it can be. Um, I think we're a state that appreciates our freedom especially, and we need more voices in Concord that are going to be voting pro-liberty, um, pro-fiscal freedom, and just help to keep government out of the way so that families and small businesses can thrive, and I hope to be that person. Oh, that's awesome. Sure, I'm sure you got many emails throughout the years from Laura up there on different issues. Oh, I remember and, many, many coming in. You know, in. her and her, her husband, Pat, are very yeah. focused on and watching what we've done up there for years. Uh, what made you get, I mean, what made you get into that? Let go to local politics. What made you get into that? Okay. Into the planning board. Well, planning board came after I spent some time doing the leadership for London Dairy course. I took that course. I was one of the first. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it was really helpful to kind of give the people in, in the class a little overview of what was going on in town and how somebody could get involved. And uh, right when that was finishing up, there were a couple spots open on the planning board, so mm -hmm. I figured that would be a good place to start. I'd done some work in real estate um, before I had my kids, and um, I was just interested in getting involved, giving a little bit back to the community. Mm -hmm. So I began to serve on the board and just found it really interesting. And I think I served for eight years mm -hmm. um, before my all my kids became teenagers and I needed to spend now, a little more time at home. I, I, well, sure, I, one thing I'm not sure you know about, you, you, did you key in when she said, all my kids? This lady is an angel, <laughs> okay? How many kids had, did you adopt? Ah, okay, I adopted four kids. Okay, um, were they brothers and sisters? They, yes, yes, yes they are, remember, they're brothers and I sisters. I remember when they came there. Yeah, yes, uh -huh. there was quite a few of them. Um, so uh, my, my husband Patrick and I had a son, Eric, and when he was seven years old, we adopted four kids out of the New Hampshire foster care system. Mm -hmm. So they're all brothers and sisters. And uh, they came to live with us here in Londonderry and it's been kind of a wild ride ever since, but geez, that was, uh, well, they were all under eight at the time and now they range from 22 to 16, so. Wow, God bless you. So that's, you that's one of the reasons why I chose now to get mm -hmm. involved. Right. First of all, I was very sorry to hear that you're going to be going to be leaving us and going to Florida, although I completely understand. Yeah. Well, I'm actually, a lot of people think I'm moving to Florida. I'm not. Yeah. I'm just, what I'm going to do is I uh, have a condo there. I'll just go back and forth. I have yeah. too many medical issues and other stuff there that it's catching up to me now from the Marines. So it's time for me to start enjoying life before it takes my life. Well, you know well, I mean, so that's why I figured that it's, it's time. We're you know, I'm not you young like Sherman sure. Packard, you know, he's, he was up there when they were riding horse and buggy, you know, buggies <laughs> up there, you know. <laughs> well, Al, I can honestly say we're going to miss you, and the house isn't going to be the same without you being up there. Well, you got to admit, I brought some excitement there, you, you but you haven't seen nothing did. yet now, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, and I, I'm not sure there's too much of a comparison, but yeah. <laughs> anyways, it should be an interesting, mm -hmm. interesting. La, la, What impressed me about you, Laura, is your freedom mentality, uh, that liberty, get up and go, uh, government out of my house, out of my pocket, leave my guns alone and leave my Bible alone. <laughs> I mean, no. wh Thank you. what are you looking to do when you get up to the state house? Because sure, I'm sitting right here now. You're going to be the speaker next year. So. Well, you know, the freedom thing is the most important, I suppose. Um, I firmly believe that we are made to be free. And I think most of New Hampshire gets that too. And we have, you know, as our motto, live free or die, I think we have, that's a point of personal pride with a lot of New Hampshire people. Um, so that's where I'm going to be starting, you know, constitutional governance, 
keeping an eye on the New Ham uh, on the Republican Party state platform, which I think is really well written and, and lays out pretty clearly, you know, what's important um, for the Republicans to try to achieve. So some of the things I'm going to be focusing on besides generally liberty issues are, um, you know, certainly pro-Second Amendment issues, um, pro, uh, um, you know, freedom of speech, freedom of conscience. Mm -hmm. And that's going to come down, too, to parents' rights. That's something that's been um, kind of important in the last little while. We've been looking at some conflict between what parents want and what government wants, whether it's the schools or something else. And I've always, since I got involved in politics in the beginning, been a big ad advocate for parental rights because I just, clearly parents are the ones who are responsible for their kids. And they have um, both the right and the responsibility to, 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 to guide their kids upwards. Uh, so I want to make sure that the government stays out of the way of that and we support parents um, in, in raising their kids the way they see fit. Well, we were fortunate enough to uh put the Parental Bill of Rights back on the table. You personally did a, little, a lot of hard work on that. Uh, yeah, I, I, myself and uh, Senator Bradley put that together on Wednesday night so we could come back on Thursday and make sure we got it passed. Yes. So I Senator Sharon Carson was all worried thinking that, oh, because we'll, she sat on that committee that, you know, one person on the House side wasn't going to go that route, but apparently he fixed it and made it go forward. So. I was very proud of London Dairy last, last week. I saw some of the hearings and I was pretty pr proud of our delegation. So thank you for your hard so. work on that. And now we just all need to encourage the governor to sign it. Mm -hmm. um, I hope he will. Now, yes. are you yeah. aware, like London Dairy throws a lot of weight up there. Sharon Packett, the speaker. Doug Thomas is the vice chair. I'm the chairman of State and Federal Asian Veterans Affairs. Who am I missing? Um, Wayne um, McDonald, um, Wayne vice, is vice, vice, vice chair, chair. Of, um, of the um, election, uh, law. election law, and Tom Dolan. Uh, Tom Dolan is chairman of municipal and county. So, and that's just coming out of Londonderry, seven representatives. You see what I'm saying? So, you have some shoes to fill when you get up there. Believe now, me, I know. you had told me your committee that you were interested, you wanted to serve. Tell them now. Well, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think probably my strengths lie um, in, in education matters, so I think probably the education committee would be a great fit for me. Um, I'd be happy to talk about other things, but that's that's my first instinct. Now, what, what do you, you plan? I, on? I knew she was going to say education. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew it. But let's see. What do you plan on doing uh, for education? What is your goal there? <sighs> that's a real good question. There's been so much going on this year, to be honest. Just keeping up with what's going on has been a little bit crazy. You so want to bring CRT back in there? Oh, no, oh, I do okay. not. Just check it. <laughs> Let's keep uh, CRT. Yeah. Well, the thing that's tricky about CRT is that, you know, it's, you keep hearing it's not part of the curriculum, not part of the curriculum. But if it's part of the teacher training, if it's part of everything around the edges, it's still getting into our schools. And I think that's why the parents' rights bill is just so important. Because if parents can have their eyeballs on what their kids are doing, if there's transparency and a good understanding and a good working relationship between the parents and the teachers, um, then a lot of these problems can take care of themselves without a lot of extra legislation. You know, um, I'm generally a believer that that the more local the governance is, the better. And if the school board can handle it, that's great. Um, when there's a problem and it has to be kicked up to the state, okay, then let's see if we can get it addressed and turn it back around to the, to the local uh, communities. But um, I think the Parents' Bill of Rights is really going to do a lot in that direction. So if it doesn't get signed this year, the, my absolute first priority next year would be to try to, to work to get something just like that passed. If it doesn't get signed, it will be back. Good. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Very good news. I mean, it's like the mess. Uh, you know, we, I told the school board and I said to him uh, right there to that superintendent when I spoke, if you can't fix this on the mass, then we legislators will. Under Sherm's leadership, they pushed and pushed for parent, for the, uh, to get rid of the uh, mass mandates. Mm -hmm. And we passed it overwhelmingly in the House, the Republicans sent it to the Senate, overwhelmingly passed the Senate with Republicans, and the governor vetoed it. I know, I know, and there are a lot of people disappointed. And my Texas and everything else are coming in. Some people were blaming me like it was my fault, mm -hmm. you know, on some of the things, the real nasty uh, stuff that I was sent. It was out of my control. We voted for it. Yeah. We did everything we can to get this thing passed. No, I get it. You but know. one another area where you guys did great work was in the, um, in the education freedom accounts that got put into the, uh, right. put in last year. Um, and that's another area where I just think maybe we need to stay on the defensive because there were so many bills attacking that this year and so many really, really close votes 
um, that you know that's another reason why we need more conservative Republicans up in the House so that we're having so that we can these votes aren't so close basically. Um, well, it, that that's 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 key to moving forward next year. Right now, uh, we're at the smallest amount of majority that from the records we've looked into that we've ever had in, in the in the history of the New Hampshire House. Yeah. Well, and these the public schools, a lot of people think that if you're pro-school choice, you're anti-public school. And that really couldn't be farther from the truth. It's just that one size doesn't fit all. Amen. And, you know, I look at my own family as a great example. Mm -hmm. I, when I did adopt the four kids, they were all elementary age. And they had had a very disrupted childhood. Mm -hmm. And we chose to put them in a Catholic school, in a private Catholic school because it was very small, because we knew every teacher by name, because we had a working relationship in a real community atmosphere, and because then they could stay in the same school right through eighth grade. And for them, that was just critically important, and I th think it made a big difference in their success moving forward. Um, so that's not everybody's situation, I get that, but I, I would never want to take the choice away from another family who saw a benefit to going mm -hmm. to a non-public school or a public charter school. Right. You know, I agree. I'm a father of seven children. When I was stationed in Delaware, I moved into an area with a good, great school system. We did our homework. They said now because my kids were moving up in the grades, they were going to bus them into Manchester, but they were getting rid of busing so they wouldn't have to. Ne coming near the end of the school year, they said, oh, no, we're not going to do it. We're going to bus them into Manchester. I mean, not Manchester, Wilmington, mm -hmm. Delaware. And I'm in the Marines. I said, no, that's not going to happen to my children. I want them educated. I moved out of Delaware, and because now I work in Delaware, I moved them all, all the way to Aberdeen, Maryland, an hour and a half away, because they had great schools in Aberdeen, Maryland, to make sure my kids got a good education. I sacrificed an hour and a half ride every day to go to work and go home to make sure that my kids had a good education. Right. And but many parents, you know, have to do the same thing because you, you hit it right on the money. One size does not fit all. I had seven, you know, different personalities with you know, in different marriages I had, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so I understand fully, believe me, and I think you would definitely make a big difference there in education there. You know? Well, just, just so you know, this year, the Education Committee had over 100 bills. I saw that. The most, the most bills, I yeah. think, in the, all the time I've been up there, mm -hmm. the most bills that any committee wow. has ever had. Yeah. It's like they were throwing poop against but, the wall and hoping well, it sticks. David, David Luno, Representative Luno from, uh, what is it, Hopkinton or Dunbar, mm -hmm. up there, I think had 10 or 12 different bills attacking the education freedom account. Yeah. And you know, he wanted, you know, a little piece here, a little piece yeah. here, a little piece here. Mm -hmm. We killed every one of them. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, I mean, that was like 12 bills right there yeah. of him attacking the education freedom accounts. I had a, a, a unique opportunity this year. Uh, one of the things I, I do as a volunteer position was looking at the bills as they were coming in and, and seeing who was, who was uh, sponsoring them and what the point was. And I was just amazed at how many things picked away at the education freedom account or tried mm -hmm. to um, pick away at the education freedom uh, accounts and also how many tried to pick away at the 24 week um, abortion restriction. So both of those were under serious mm -hmm. assault this year and, and that's some place I'd like to be, like to increase our majority next year. Yeah. Oh, without a I doubt. would too. Yeah. <laughs> It'll definitely make a difference there. And, uh, you know, it's a shame. I mean, we had like 15 representatives that voted with the Democrats on union issues. Yeah. You know, and we, we had a low number, but we were in the majority. But still, that threw us off. We couldn't, you know, stop them. Uh, they passed some real bad bills. Yeah. But I'm glad the Senate, uh, with the Senate, they killed that one bill where the state was going to give 7.5% 7 money towards retirement. Well, the state don't, you know, do the contracts. You know, you want to give them raises and this and that. Why should the state, the state is everybody, pay more money in the education, you know, or in these different retirement funds when you're given the pay raises? Mm. You pay the retirement. Yeah, they they wanted to make it permanent. Right. 7.5. The Senate made it one year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, they made it one year. Yeah, they did make it oh, one okay. year. Oh, okay. Then yeah. they changed it. I thought they tabled that bill. I, I I don't honestly remember else, mm -hmm. okay. but I, I do yeah. remember that um, yeah it was um, the house you know did pass it mm -hmm. because of you know Michael Bryan's speech there, but uh, the Senate did re, re change it to one year. Oh wow okay. 
That so, was $28 million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how goes the campaign? What have you been doing? Well, I'm mostly in the getting ready phase, so uh, I get to sign my papers on June 1st. So I've been getting yard signs organized and palm com cards organized and business cards and all that kind of stuff. I've got my website up and running, um, Twitter and Facebook, what have you. So I've been working on all that and then just getting around and meeting some more people. I'll be out again on Saturday just knocking on doors with a couple of other people from the New Hampshire GOP and a couple of other candidates just knocking on doors, introducing myself mm -hmm. and encouraging people to get out to vote. Um, it was kind have of eye-opening. Have you been knocking on doors? Yes, I just went out the one Saturday a couple of weeks ago to get started with that. What are you hearing from the people? You know, um, it seems early to a lot of people, but they're talking about gas prices and they're talking about grocery prices. And um, and th those are actually the main things I heard about going around. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful day, so a lot of people were in pretty good moods. It was nice to just talk to people and, and, uh, and hear about their, generally things are going pretty well, but they're concerned about economic mm -hmm. stuff. Oh. And that was that was the main issue that most people were hitting. Yeah, for with. the few people that I talked to that day, you know, a lot of people aren't home when you go out knocking on doors, at least on right. a busy Saturday. But um, but the people that I talked to were most concerned about economic issues and what's mm -hmm. going on both at the federal level, really, um, with and pol energy policy and things like that. That's mm -hmm. making such an impact on on people's grocery bills and their and their gas bills. And unfortunately, there's not much we can do as no, a state. It's out of our control. It's out of our control. No, a lot of the things, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to take care of right away. I would like to see um, for New Hampshire to re retain a defensive posture against some of the government, the federal government overreach. Um, you know, I, I believe in states' rights, and um, I think sometimes the, the federal administration sort of just barges in a little bit where they don't belong here. And That's I think right. New Hampshire can do things just fine most of the time on its own. So. Well, we've been doing pretty good, I think, under Sh uh, Sherman's watch there on telling them to go pound sand in some <laughs> areas, especially on trying to pass any gun laws or yep. anything like that. Did, the, did that pass the Senate, I'm sure? Yeah, uh, if I remember, it did. It did? Plus, okay. we, plus we did pass, I mean, it was my own bill that uh, said we will not um, conform to any, uh, you know, mandate from the yes. federal government on, uh, you know, masks and COVID stuff. So we were able to get that passed, watered down a little bit, but we still got it passed. Now that's so great. Mm -hmm. There's so much that you guys are doing well, and so much that I'm excited about when I read the news from New Hampshire. And it's kind of funny because a lot of people who get into politics or get into running for office are there because they're sick of how everything's getting screwed up. And that's really the opposite of why I'm getting involved, is just to kind of keep carrying forward right. the good work that's already been going on and, um, and maybe just even build on that next year. Well, we have, a, we have the opportunity, I mean, um, you know, uh, as, as Al mentioned before, our rainy day fund right now is over $250 million. It's never been that high. Mm -hmm. And um, I think when the Democrats left it, it was $10 million. Mm. Uh, it goes to show you. Um, and um, we've done a, a tremendous amount. We've got about a, I think we'll probably end up with $400 plus million dollars. Um, over what the budget estimates were. Wow. That's so, a lot of money. And last year you returned a lot of that to mm -hmm. the taxpayers and tax relief, right? $100 we, million. Dollars, yeah, no, that, we actually right? cl close to $200 million. The $100 million dollars alone was in the statewide right. education property tax. And what we did is instead of sending it back to the cities and towns, which we knew some would probably just spend it on whatever, we wanted to make sure it went to the taxpayers. So we um, it was uh, $355 million that they collected through the, uh, s the SWEP fund, and we put $100 million right into it so that the, we'd only have to collect, I think, $250 million plus dollars so that it was actually a property tax relief. And there was a number of other issues that we had, you know, $20 million, $30 million here. And um, in the uh, committee of conference this week, uh, we just uh, passed a bill that's going to send another $70 million back to the cities and towns for bridges and roads. Mm -hmm. And um, so that, uh, that'll be another thing that we've done to reduce property taxes. And the one thing I want to make you aware of, you're going to hear that uh, we didn't do anything to reduce property taxes because in a lot of cities and towns, the, you know, your taxes went up. Right, yeah. So what, what you need to answer, your answer to that is, just imagine how much higher they would have been if we hadn't to send back the money that we did. Right. 
Right. So we sent, uh, we, we probably will end up sending back $250, $300 million that are property taxpayers of New Hampshire. Yeah. You know, what most people don't realize, and so you, and you're going to hear this, the statewide education property tax is each individual home paying that tax. So when everyone yells, we want more money from the state in education, we want more money, what you're yelling at is tax every house more <laughs> money. That's what you're doing. Most people don't realize that. Yeah. And then when your taxes go up in town, it's because when you go to the polls, you're voting on the town's budget. The state has nothing to do with right. that except the, you know, what they're required to pay in retirement. That's Londonderry's employees right. or other town's employees. That has nothing to do with the state. Right. But yet they want, oh, the state got to do this, state got to do that. The state is everybody. Right. You I know. know. That, that's the key thing to keep in mind is that there is no state money. It's all taxpayer, taxpayer money. Taxpayer money. Had to yeah, work for that. that's right. And, you know, that's, it's mm -hmm. important. And that's one that of mind. the things I used to hear all the time. Oh, the state should be paying more in education. So you want me to tax every house? support that i'm not going to do that maybe we need to relook at what we're doing in education maybe we, are we double programs are we you know wasted money you know they give high raises moments every year uh, the teachers are the ones that in my opinion over the years deserve it the administrators we got too many uh, than when i was growing up in school too many administrators well it is a big chunk of our, our budget here in, in london yeah. right? it's more than double mm -hmm. i think it's more than double what, yeah. what we're paying on the town 80, side. 83 83, 84 million dollars mm -hmm. yeah. school budget or the town was 30, 30 38 or yeah. something like that. Yeah. You yeah. know, this town was the first time I voted absentee ballot in, uh, since I've been in town in 2000. Uh, I never voted absentee. I was at the polls, and, you know, because I was in Florida recuperating for an operation. So we, uh, but it was nice to be able to not sweat it, not yep. stand yep. out there. Just and, get it done. You know, you know, for many years I've seen her up at the um, state house. You testified on bills. You've done other stuff. Were you part of a group, or did you do this on your own? Uh, mostly, I did it on my own. But I've been fortunate to just come in contact with people who are advocates for freedom, or for parents' rights, for pro-life issues, for um, um, student privacy is a big thing. It was especially for me back when they were doing the Smarter Balance assessments, and Common Core came into the schools. So I was just really lucky to get, get in touch with a bunch of people who kind of knew the ropes up there and would talk to me if they needed an extra voice or wanted some particular angle on something that was personal to me. Um, so just over the years, I've gotten to know a lot of people. And really, actually, just y you two and the, and the other state reps and Sharon Carson here in Londonderry, you've all been so open and so welcoming. And really, if anybody ever wants to go up to the state house either to testify or to get involved in any kind of way, we have such an incredibly accessible system here in New mm -hmm. Hampshire. I mean, just the number of people that I've met that will just come up and shake my hand, that will be encouraging, give advice, you know, just show me the ropes of some little thing. It's really astonishing to me what, what an awesome, close to the ground state we live in. Um, and on top of that, then we get presidential candidates. You know, my mm -hmm. oldest daughter and I used to go around every time somebody would come to town or up into Manchester um, who was running for president. We have pictures with practically everybody. You know, it's right. just, mm -hmm. just funny how we get that kind of exposure. I love it. So. No, that's awesome. We are truly the only state left in the country that has a citizen legislature. Yeah. We're the only ones left. Are we the, do we have the largest, the we largest body next to just one or two countries or something We like that? have the third largest third legislative yeah. body in the English-speaking world. Yeah, okay. The only ones that are bigger are the United States Congress and the House of Commons. Okay. Sharon, what do you think she's going to do with all that money she's going to get paid? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, it should take care of all her property taxes. <laughs> yeah, you know? right. well, yeah. What is it? You, is it $100 a year? $100, you get $100 a year. A year. That's, why, that's the dirty secret. That's why I'm in it. It's for the money. You know? For the money, yeah. Is that what it is? <laughs> what it, it, I think, yeah, plus it's tax. So, uh, you know, okay. you'll get a check for like 187 yeah. after yeah. you get elected. No. You, you'll get, you'll get your, your, your check for your uh, salary at the beginning in December, the first year. Okay. But it's also considered taxes by uh, salary by the uh, income by the federal government. So they actually take out $15 or something like this. Okay. So you get about $184. No, so for a those Democrats that <laughs> called me many times cussing and yelling, I made $100 a year. That's why I might have told you and used some choice words. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there for the record over the years there, you know, and some of the threats and the calls we get. Yeah. Because, you know, Democrats are unhappy on the way you voted. So you, you have to have thick skin in this business. 
You know, I don't know how many yeah. times I've been threatened. Uh, I had to get the state police uh, or the chief security uh, at the house because somebody said they were going to beat me up and hit me with brass knuckles on the state stairs. And, you know, but they were stupid. They called their, with their phone number, left it open on my phone. He was in the mental house in Concord. Oh, no. You know what I mean? So <laughs> they said, do you want to press charges? I said, no, I don't want to press charges. Just get them off the phone. You know? I know it's always part of the game, but at the same time, I do wish for a little bit more of a return to civility. I think it's you know, bad. people are trying to do what they consider to be mm -hmm. best, and not everybody has the same idea of the route to get there, but it's certainly better if we can have civil conversations. Mm -hmm. The Democrats have gotten out of control. It's gotten worse than I've seen, and I grew up a Democrat in Cambridge, Mass., you know, with my grandfather being a mayor of Cambridge and everything. We tip, grew up in Tip O'Neill. I mean, we see it, huh, Sherm, up at the State House, the way they it's, yell it's, it's the on worst, the floor. It's the worst I've ever seen it. I've yeah. never seen it uh, this bad. Um, I attribute it a lot to the fact that the first year, and you know, we, we were off campus uh, and we did hybrid meetings. One of the things that um, really helps is when you're sitting in a committee room and you're sitting right beside um, somebody from the opposite party who may disagree with you philosophically, but you get to know them as a person and you can actually become friends, disagree, disagree philosophically. We lost the whole year with that. Yeah. And um, we're doing a, a lot of things that we're going to be doing over the summer. We have an orientation and they only had um, half a day orientation. We're going to be doing three days of orientation. And one of the things we're going to be working on heavily is civility and how to act and what you should do and shouldn't do as a representative. Yeah. Oh, Laura, if, how do people get, to, get in touch with you if they want to help, they want to get involved? Tell them why you want them to vote right now. You got sure. one minute. Got one minute, great. Okay, so you can visit lauraforlondonderry.com. Okay, it's a numeral for lauraforlondonderry.com. And you can learn a little bit more about me and a lot more about the positions that I'll be taking and what's important to me. Uh, I'm on Twitter, at 60free. You can email me, laura at lauraforlondonderry.com. Um, I'm on Facebook, Laura for Londonderry, and that's a great place to start. I would love your support. I would love your help. I'll have yard signs in the next couple of weeks, and the Democrats are going to be just pouring tens of millions of dollars into flipping New Hampshire blue this year, and I'm really hoping that that doesn't happen. So if you'd like to support me, I'd love a chance to earn your vote. And hopefully be I'll be knocking on your door. Be prepared for the attacks that are coming your way. You have that thick skin. We've been fighting the battle for years here. And just keep pushing forward there. Think about what's best for New Hampshire to maintain the New Hampshire advantage. Once again, this is Al Baldessaro with Who's Looking Out For You. I'm honored to have my co-host, Sherm Packer, the Speaker of the House. And thank you for coming, Laura. Thank you for having have me. Have a great day.